In this Easy Drama 2 tutorial video I'm going to show you how you can actually create and maintain your own custom drum groove library, okay? This is very very useful, so make sure to watch this video. Hey everyone, this is Toby and welcome to another Easy Drama 2 tutorial video. So, um, like I was telling you in the introduction, we are going to um, take a closer look and how you can actually save your custom grooves so um, you know you can you can keep them for future projects so you don't have to alter the drums every time but you can rather just take a look into your custom groove set or your custom groove library um, this is going to save you quite a lot of time and on top of that this is also actually um, you know extending easy drama because um, every time you use tap to find um, the song creator or any feature of easy drama that is looking for specific grooves is not just taking a look at the easy drama default library but it's also taking a look into your custom library which makes things so much easier and when you keep you know easy drama using for quite a while um, and you have a bigger and bigger growing library going on um, you are more likely to get you know, just the perfect drum groove you are looking for for your particular song you're writing on. Okay, so let's have a closer look at the screen, and you can see that here is an instance of Easy Drama already. So let us quickly just take a look and how the um, at how the the section looks like of the custom library, because by default it's hidden a little bit. But if you go to browser, and on the very right side. Here is this little arrow icon, and if you click this one, your custom grooves are actually going to be opened. Okay, so what you see here is first that you have in the in the upper half of this window, you have um, all your folders that you created, so you can create folders and you know you can actually put folders inside folders, so you can create a very complex structure based on what you actually need or based on how you want to save and um, yeah, let's say order your different grooves you want to save. So the first one you're going to see is the user MIDI and usually this is blank, which means that there is no folder added. And you can always create a new folder by right clicking user MIDI and saying add folder. And then you can just type in a name and then the folder got created. So let me just quickly re remove this one. And if you want to, you know, change the order, it's, it's no problem. You can just drag and drop it somewhere else. And uh, for example, you can also come here and say, where is it? Um, Manage MIDI libraries, now it's something different. So you can also say you want to add a folder inside one of those folders. And there you can, of course, rename it as well and call it, um, I don't know, let's say 140 BPM, for example. So, um, you know, it's, it's totally up to you how you want to create the structure. So you can create a structure based on different genres and then inside these you can create, um, you know, you can sort it by songs, for example, or you can sort it by BPM, you can sort it by groove type, whether it's a fill, a chorus or an introduction or something. So, um, you know, this is very cool because it's totally up to you how you're going to use this feature. What's very important, however, is that everything you do inside Easy Drama and each and every one of these key features like tap to find, um, you know, how oh, it's called, the song creator, and um, all these things, okay, they are taking a look into your custom library as well. You have to set it up, but by default it's enabled. But in case you unfortunately or you accidentally um, disable it. I will show you how you can enable it again later. But by default, everything you save over here, everything you changed, is going to put is going to be considered when you use tap to find or you know the song creator in in the future, which is awesome. Okay, so um, this is a very very big and a very very good reason to actually save all your files inside this custom library. So I was just preparing some kind of a groove down here and I changed this a little bit and let's assume we want to save it down here or down there or on the right side in the custom library. So let's just quickly have a listen how it sounds like. Okay, I was changing a lot so the original one had less uh, kick drums going on but in this case I just turned up the amount on the kick drum so, you know, so I just have a different groove. And let's say I like this one, I want to save it for the future. So what you can do is, you can actually go over here and select any of those folders you want to save this into. 
because when you right click on this one you can say add to user MIDI and by default it's always copied to the folder you selected okay so if you want to copy it to user MIDI you can go here and select uh, so first of course you have to select the folder obviously and then you go over here and say add to user MIDI and then it's here in this folder from here you can of course rename it because variation 2 is not really telling you a lot what's going on so let's call it I don't know let's say it's maybe um, let's call it bridge or something yeah I mean you could call it for example bridge 140 bpm or bridge kick drum only or something like this whatever fits to the actual groove you created so you have this groove over here and let's say oh yeah well you want to have it in another folder it's no problem everything you have to do is just drag and drop it to some of those folders and that's pretty much everything you have to do so if you want to put it into classic rock you know let the mouse go over the classic rock um, folder or you can actually put it directly into the 140 bpm folder if you like this one okay and then you can see it is disappearing from the list because when we select user MIDI, we just see the root folder and now if we go to classic rock we see everything inside the classic rock folder but not the folders inside this folder and if i go to 140 bpm you can see that there is our bridge we just saved right now okay so this is very important to know that everything you know inside folders is not going to be displayed so when i create a couple more folders that are inside classic rock and if you select classic rock you are not seeing everything that's inside classic rock you're rather just seeing what's in the root folder called classic rock so this is very important in case you're looking for something um, you have to make sure that you take a look at all the folders you have access to because you are you're otherwise not seeing all the possible results or grooves you've made in the past okay so this way you can save your custom grooves and like I told you, it's it's very nice because you can use this with any features. Yeah, you can use the custom grooves and even use the edit play style feature by double clicking them. So um, you know the possibilities with your custom grooves are by no way limited. So let me just have a quick look at my list because I was writing down what I wanted to show you inside this tutorial. So uh, save on drums, check. Create folders, check. View folders in Explorer. This is interesting. Um, the reason is that you may think that Easy Drama is saving all your, your files kind of encrypted somewhere where you don't have access to, but this is not true because um, you can actually make a right click on this one and then you can see there is an open and explorer button. So when you click this one, um, the explorer window is coming up and there you can see I'm inside my user MIDI folder and then I have a classic, oops, where is it? Um, then I have a classic rock folder, a metal folder, and user beats folder. And if I open up classic rock, I'm going to see my 140 BPM folder. And inside this folder, I'm going to see my bridge MIDI file. And this is awesome. I mean, think about it. Um, Easy Drama is storing all the, you know, all the files you add to this custom library as actual MIDI files on your computer so you can access them. You can update it. You can use it with different software. You can just drag and drop it and put it into the DAW, okay? So for example, let's take a look. Everything you have to do is you just grab this file and put it over here. And then my DAW is importing it. Let's say I want to say have it as a single track. And here it is. That's my MIDI file. That's what Easy Drummer saved in my library, okay? So um, let's, let's say, you know, just for you to understand why this is so extremely useful, it's simply let's say you love Easy Drummer for 99% of music styles, um, but there are other drum samplers like additive drums and stuff like this. So let's assume for one specific genre you want to use additive drums, but additive drums has not such a nice um, yeah, drum programming editor. So you can actually use Easy Drummer to create drum grooves and then you can, you can just save them and use them in additive drums and that's just awesome. So it's, it's really, really cool. And what also is nice about this one is that, for example, when you run backups, and I would actually suggest you to run regular backups because I had the issue with my computer that one time my hard drive was very very bad damaged and um, I was losing tons of data and I have like almost 200 gigabytes of samples and stuff 
Um, it's ridiculous. And when you lose all of this and you have to download all of this and you have to remember where you got it from and bought it from and it's it's just a pain in the ass, you know? And when you use it for quite a while, um, you want to make backups. And everything you need to do to create a backup of this one is you go to the Explorer, you go to, you know, you go one folder up, then you can copy the entire user, user media folder and you can uh, put it or save it onto some kind of external hard drive. It's awesome because then you just have a copy of this one and whatever happens to your hard drive, you're not going to lose all the grooves and stuff you've been recording in Easy Drama the past years. Okay, so this is really good. And I like this one. So it's very well thought by ToonTrack, to be honest. So um, let me show you something else. There are actually a couple of settings what you can do over here. So you will possibly, or you have possibly noticed this little menu icon on the left side from the button that opens your custom MIDI library. So if you go over here, click this one, you can see manage MIDI libraries. That's the only entry this menu is showing you. So if you click this one, you will directly be redirected to the settings from Easy Drummer where you can see um, this is your MIDI library um, settings over here. So what you can do over here first is on the left side, you can see what folders you included to your Easy Drummer MIDI library. And if you click those once, you will see a little arrow on the right side. And if you click this, you can again say Open Explorer, which is doing the same as the Open and Explorer button we just used on the front end of Easy Drummer. And um, what you can also do is you can say you want to include it in the search or not. So this means if the check or if this um, little, yeah, if the check is made or that the checkbox, the checkbox is um, selected, it means that everything inside this folder is going to be considered by tap to find song creator and everything else you have inside easy drama if you don't want this you can remove this one but um, i think in 99.9 percent .9 of cases you want this to be included so you can select this one um, what's also cool is that for example let's say you want to have different folder structures okay or you want to embed midi files that are from a different drum plugin or third party files you can possibly buy in the internet for, by some session drummers or stuff like this so if you want to include those everything you have to do is you go down here to the add folder to user libraries this will show uh, a selection folder for um, yeah, for some folders inside or on your explorer and you can just select whatever folder you want to use um, and we can take this one. So you can see it's on my desktop bias amp two test. So this was from my bias amp um, amp match video I made. Um, let's just select this one for shits and giggles. I mean, you can see there weren't any MIDI files, but you can see that this folder is now over here. And when you click on this button, you can see that you can actually remove this one. Okay. So when you uncheck it, you can say you don't want it to be used with song creator and tap to find but it's still accessible. You can still use this folder using the browser by EasyRummer. But if you want to completely remove it, you can just right click and remove it. And you can do this with the user MIDI, okay? So you don't accidentally delete your user MIDI, okay? And I really like this one. So the user MIDI is always synced. And um, in case you're changing files inside your MIDI library by not using EasyDrummer, um, which means that Easy Drummer doesn't recognize there has been a change because Easy Drummer is actually taking a look at your MIDI library when you start it up. So in case you use a third-party program or something to edit the MIDI files and Easy Drummer didn't recognize the files ha have changed yet, what you can do is you can right-click next to user MIDI on this arrow again and then you can say sync file changes. And what's happening is that Easy Drummer is technically taking a look at all the files and it's taking the latest version into account so you are using the latest MIDI files. Um, however, this is not this is just necessary when you edit the MIDI files um, outside of Easy Drummer. So the only the only way this makes really sense or it really makes sense is when you, for example, are um, um, you know, copying some MIDI files into some of your library folders and you can't find them, then you can refresh so they are going to be shown in your browser. Okay. And that's actually pretty much everything you have to know. Okay. So experiment with this, save your grooves, because every time you create a custom groove and you're going to save it inside the structure, you are saving work in the future. So I would really recommend that when you have some grooves going on that you like a lot, save them. 
Yeah, and this is particularly the case when you, for example, are yeah when you are a fan of like more extreme genres like metal or death metal, you're possibly going to have a lot of blast beats and stuff like that. And um, whenever you create some drum grooves that are pretty rare in the default Easy Drummer library, I would definitely um, yeah let's say. I would recommend that you save it inside your custom library because this is going to save you a lot of time later in the future. Okay, so if you have any questions about this particular feature of Easy Drummer, drop me a comment in the comment section below because um, yeah, I actually want to talk to you and I want to help you with your stuff and problems and questions. So whenever you want to know something, don't worry, just drop me a comment. Um, I'm very looking forward to this actually. And um, otherwise, yeah. Subscribe, hit the bell, like the video so YouTube recognizes my videos are kind of good, I hope at least. And this actually makes, yeah, this helps me to reach out to more people, okay? So um, the next video is going to be about multi track um, routing or multi output. So this allows you to mix, um, mix Easy Drummer the way you can mix and record a real drum kit, which is awesome. You will see it in the next video. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. Okay, so thank you very much for watching once more and see you next time. Bye bye.